What's up, Simonix, and welcome to a quick overview about all the cool new things of Ionic 7 because a new major version is out, Ionic 7. So let me show you what's new, what's breaking, and what's pretty cool about it. Future Simon here, quick break. I forgot to tell you that this is actually the Ionic 7 beta version. So I got super excited about this new version that I forgot to say this is the beta. This is not the release candidate or the final version. We hopefully see this soon, but this is the beta. Be a bit careful and probably don't update your production apps yet, but still, all the new changes you can get them with this beta version. You can find, of course, all the change logs uh, in the breaking changes document. There are a few breaking changes, but it's not really heavy and hard for your application in general. You can just update to the latest version of Ionic and then let me show you what's new. So I've prepared a little example. Number one, inline components. In the last version, we already had inline components for the popover and the modal. Inline components means, for example, here with Angular, you can trigger the action sheet and other elements right from the HTML and you don't need to inject the controller and call the controller and all these boilerplate code. So here we go, open sheet, just with these few lines. As you can see, it's connected to a sheet of buttons. So yeah, we could probably do this in HTML, but actually that will look kind of horrible. You can have this for a bunch of other components now as well. So I said in the last version we had modal and popover. We can now do it for the uh, ion action sheet, as we've seen. We can do it for an alert. We can do it for the loading overlay. We can do it for the picker component and we can even trigger a toast. All of this works the same way. You define a trigger on that element and then you have a button or something else with the ID of that trigger and boom, it opens up that component. And usually you can pass in all the information in here, just like for the modal where you can have the breakpoints or the initial breakpoints. Uh, you can define all those properties right here. Second change is related to ion changes. Let me show you an example from the previous version of Ionic. If you previously had a checkbox where you set the selected property of that checkbox, for example, a second after your view was initialized or at any point of your code. What happens is, let me refresh this, it sets it and it triggers the ion on change here. But the user didn't do anything and a lot of people have problems with this, uh, especially using ion daytime. Um, there are quite a few bugs related to this and all of them have been resolved because now this behavior is only triggered on user committed changes. So let me bring up Ionic 7 again. Here's my example. I do the same thing uh, after about one second. Yeah, after about one second, I set the selected flag. So let's refresh this. Select it and you see no more ion change log. So that's pretty cool uh, Not only for the checkbox also especially for the date time because most people are setting the date time to something specific in the beginning And that was always challenging so nice little update to ion change if you've made it this far, you're certainly interested in Ionic and very serious about Ionic development. So do me a favor, two things, hit the like and subscribe button below for more Ionic videos coming in the future because still most people are not even subscribed to this channel and I don't know why. And second thing, check out the Ionic Academy, which is my online school to help every Ionic developer build awesome Ionic applications. Every web developer can achieve this. If you're using Ionic UI or not, if you're using Capacitor or Cordova, we got you covered. So go check it out, ionicacademy.com. You can start a subscription just for one month, you can stay for a year or for however long you want and enjoy fresh material about Ionic coming every month. Input updates. Previously, to achieve something like this, you had to come up with quite a lot of code that isn't actually very clear to a beginner. So you have an item, that item actually specifies counter true, shape, fill, then you have a label in the floating position, you have labels in the helper slot or perhaps even error slot, which were introduced in the last version and spoiler, they're already deprecated again. And then you had the ion input as well with a max length and all of this is quite a lot of code. So let me show you how this now looks with Ionic 7. There we go, you can specify all of that just on the ion input. Bye bye ion item, bye bye ion label and position. Let's do everything on this component. And we can check it out even better here in the pixel. You see that input, it's just amazing. That's, it's just amazing. It even looks better than the other input. Like something here was broken. Uh, I was trying this out. I just couldn't get it even to work like this. So I don't know, they probably also fixed something. And you can get this preview with a floating label, with a counter down here, uh, with a text, all right with this one ion input. Isn't that great? If this now also had self-closing text, everything would be perfect in this world. Can we do this? 
Yes, we can. After a lot of good news, I also have some bad news for you. Ion Slides is finally deprecated as well as Ion Virtual Scroll. This was already uh, recommended like one, two major versions ago, uh, but don't fear, I've created videos already on this in the past. So how to use Swiper, which is the new recommendation instead of Ion Slides, it's really, it works pretty much exactly the same. And also for Virtual Scroll, uh, you can use the framework solutions. There's an Angular Virtual Scroll, there's a React and Vue Virtual Scroll. So you just need to remove these things uh, if you're going for Ionic 7, so Ion Slides and Virtual Scroll deprecated finally removed okay you already made it through all the little gritty changes and now we get to something that is very very cool and when I read about this I was like huh that's interesting and this could really be very helpful for many people and that is base components it is still in developer preview so uh, take everything that I say with a grain of salt everything could break it could completely change but the beginning looks very interesting. Let me show you how. So you go to your app module or wherever you got your Ionic module configuration. And here we know we can pass in an Ionic config object. And that Ionic config object now has a new field that is called, what's it called? It is of course called base components and you can pass a Boolean or a base components config. Let's see, I'm gonna pass base components true and the result is an Ionic application <laughs> that looks like this, like nobody touched it before. What has just happened? We just removed all the iOS or material design custom styling for our Ionic items. No more button, no more header, no more toolbar, no more input, uh, item, whatever. We have removed all of that and we could now easily plug in something like Tailwind CSS or just have in general our own CSS and do a custom build for all these things and style them exactly to our needs without like patching around the styling and CSS variables and, and all that fun. This is quite interesting for people who want to build a real custom applications because Ionic UI components are very opinionated. They have adaptive styling for iOS and Android, which in general is pretty cool if you want that behavior, but a lot of people actually don't want that and they just want to build a custom application. However, there's one more thing that I found super interesting about this and that is that we can just say true or false. We can actually pass in a configuration that looks like this where we can either have include components or exclude components. So for example, if I have a configuration which includes the ion button, let's hit save and see, we just removed only the styling for the ion button. We still got the benefit of the ion header, we got the ion item, we got the checkboxes. And so I got really granular control over what I don't wanna have in my application. And of course I could use it the, the opposite way uh, however, what was that? Ion input, can I remove it? Um, yeah, and the styling's gone. I could also do it in the other way that I exclude everything and only include something. So I could just go with exclude components that would exclude everything. Um, only the ion button would get the styling, so everything else looks broken, but the button is still in place. I think this feature has a lot of potential. I don't know exactly where they take it. Uh, let me know if you're interested in a little tutorial about how you could create your own custom styling and mix it with Ionic. I think we could achieve really, really cool results with this new base components configuration. All right, that's already it. Check out all the change logs for version seven on GitHub. There are a lot of like minor changes changes that you can figure out like important updates for example here uh, they changed the range iOS not box shadow from 0 0.3 pixel to 0, 0 0.5 pixel just really important stuff that you should check out so go check it out link below the video you can install the latest version of Ionic 7 it should be in general an easy update for your application and everything that I've shown you was angular but of course react and view packages were also updated so let me know in the comments what you think about the changes of Ionic 7 what is the thing that you're excited about most I think for me it is actually the base components because I see a lot of potential for this in the future so leave a comment subscribe to the channel for more videos and of course check out the Ionic Academy if you want to become an Ionic Pro so until next time happy coding Simon <laughs>